Dr. Jason Fung. Uh, great to be here with you again, my friend. Oh, good to be here. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. And uh, you've been a busy man. You've been up to a lot. You, uh, you released uh, another book, uh, which is very close to my heart, uh, a culmination of a lot of the work that you've been doing over the past, geez, probably decade, but certainly the past few years. And that's called The Diabetes Code. Um, so I'd love for you to just maybe talk a little bit about that and, and why you think that was such an important thing to do. Yeah, and it's um, very close to my heart as well because I actually deal with a lot of type 2 diabetes because as a kidney specialist, um, the biggest cause of uh, kidney disease is type 2 diabetes, really by far and away. So it really is close to what I do sort of every day. I see people with type 2 diabetes all the time. And it's sort of follow on to the obesity code. So obesity code dealt with a lot of the same issues in terms of the misunderstanding of obesity, which is clearly related to the type 2 diabetes epidemic. But um, we didn't really go into sort of what is actually happening. So this is a, this book is a little bit more technical and it's a bit more specific to preventing and reversing diabetes and prediabetes, which turns out it affects a lot of Americans, almost uh, actually in some studies, more than 50% of American adults. So really a lot of people uh, are affected by that. And the book really delves into sort of the pathophysiology as to what's happening with diabetes, what the difference is, which the obesity code didn't uh, do. That's sort of where it left off. So if you have sort of, if you're more interested in type 2 diabetes, then you want to, th this gives you a bit more information. It's more of a science book rather than a sort of a how-to book. It's about understanding the disease, which I think is actually the key. If you understand the disease, then you know why you're doing what you're doing. And so one of the big misunderstandings, I think, of the disease, there's two big ones, I think. Uh, one is that it's a, people consider it, and, and this is, goes for health professionals as well. So doctors will say things like this is a chronic and progressive disease, but it's really not. It's actually a reversible disease. And the reason they say it's a chronic and progressive disease is that I think they've been treating it all wrong. What they've done is they've brought on a lot of drugs to treat what is essentially a dietary disease. The disease itself of type 2 diabetes is too much sugar in the body. So giving drugs doesn't get rid of that sugar. It doesn't do anything. In fact, it just masks the problem. So if you mask the problem, but keep putting sugar in your body, then the disease gets worse. And so what happens is that doctors say, wow, uh, I have... Uh, a lot of patients with type 2 diabetes, and every single one of them is getting worse, but yet I'm using all these drugs. Therefore, the disease must just be like that, uh, not realizing that the problem was not the disease. The problem is the way that we treated the disease was all wrong. And because it was wrong, it got worse. And then because it got worse, we had to blame something. So we blamed the disease rather than our understanding of the disease. Because again, we know it's reversible. Every single, every single study shows that. If you have a friend who gets diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, goes ahead and loses 50 pounds, that diabetes almost for sure will go away. And everybody knows that. You know that. I know that. Everybody knows that. So what happened to this notion that's chronic and progressive? So those are sort of what I consider the two big lies of type 2 diabetes. It's, it's a lie to sort of protect ourselves from recognizing the fact that we've been doing the wrong thing for so many years. We were using drugs for a dietary disease. We're not fixing the diet and then blame, and then saying, well, it's a chronic disease. The disease is just like that. Yeah. And I, I think the name diabetes mellitus is a bit of a lie also. And I don't think we can blame, you know, the people who originally named the condition because they just didn't have the science and knowledge around it. But, you know, diabetes mellitus is really named after a symptom, you know, a, a sign, the polyuria that comes with uh, very, very high uncontrolled blood sugars often. But uh, diabetes is obviously not just about uh, urinating out sugar. It's not just about having high blood sugar or hyperglycemia. It's uh, much, much more than that. And, and I love the way you describe that in your book. So could you talk a little bit about really how you see diabetes? What is, what is it really? Yeah, and that's, that is exactly right. I mean, type 2 diabetes, uh, for so many years, what we did was we thought that all of the problems resulted from the high blood glucose. So, and that's how we make the diagnosis when you have a high blood glucose. But really what causes the high blood glucose is the diabetes. 
That is, the high blood glucose is a symptom of the disease. It's not the actual disease itself. So we've confused the symptom with the actual disease. So if you want to use another example, you can take a person with a, a, a bad infection, for example. Say they have sepsis. They have a bad raging infection, and you need to give antibiotics because you have an infection. Um, the antibiotics uh, treat the disease and then therefore everything gets better. But if you're just to look at the symptoms of the disease, you would say, well, this person has a high fever. You can treat the fever with Tylenol or acetaminophen, and, but that's not going to make anybody better. So giving symptomatic treatment is not useful in any way. It's uh, just like if you're bleeding from an internal gunshot wound and you put a bunch of bandages over it to soak up the blood and you say, hey, there's no more blood. Everything's good. It's like, it's not good because you never treated the actual disease. You just saw the blood as the symptom. So you soaked it up with a bunch of gauze. So in every part of medicine, we understand that you can't just treat the symptoms. You have to treat the underlying disease. And here, what we did was we treated the symptoms and because the disease got worse, the type 2 diabetes got worse, then we said, well, it's just like that. So that's, that's sort of the big misunderstanding of type 2 diabetes. The way I see type 2 diabetes is essentially a disease of too much sugar in our body. And it's not just in the blood. It's in our whole bodies. So if you take a drug such as insulin, which is a sort of classic drug that we use for type 2 diabetes, what what you have to understand is that if your drug, if that drug is not getting rid of the sugar in the body, it's not actually doing anything because that's the disease, too much sugar in the body. What the insulin does is it takes the sugar from the blood and it just crams it into the liver. So what the liver does is like, well, what am I going to do with it? It turns it into fat, so insulin causes weight gain, and it sends that sugar sort of all throughout the body. And it goes into your nerves and it goes into your legs and it goes into your heart and everything. And over 10, 15 years, what happens is that all that sugar just rots the body. So your kidneys go, your eyes go, you go blind, you need dialysis, you get heart attacks, you get strokes, you get diabetic foot infections because there's just all this sugar sitting around in the tissues of the body. Uh, you get nerve damage, you get everything. Everything just starts to go. Uh, but the blood glucose is good because you used all this medication to shove all this glucose from where you could see it somewhere where you couldn't see it. And then because you couldn't see it, you said, well, everything must be great. At the same time, not realizing that you've just used this symptomatic, you're treating the symptom, you're not treating the disease. And it's kind of like if you have garbage and instead of throwing it out, you just put it under the sink. And when the sink is full, you put it in your bedroom and then you put it in your bathroom. And you say, look, my kitchen's nice and clean because I can't see any garbage. But the whole house starts to smell. That's exactly what we've done with type 2 diabetes. We've given these medications to shove all this sugar where we couldn't see it. And as our body starts to rot away, we said, well, that's just the disease. That's just the way it's done. But it's very powerful because if you understand that it's just about too much sugar in the body and not just the blood, then there's only two things you need to do. Stop putting sugar into the body and burn off that sugar. So if you don't put sugar in, that's a low-carbohydrate diet. So cutting out the sugar, cutting out the refined grains, refined carbohydrates. And if you want to burn it off, you do intermittent fasting. So again, let your body burn off all that sugar that's making you sick. Is it fun? No, not really. I mean, you can use exercise too, but it's, it's not as efficient a method of uh, burning it because your muscles tend to exercise the mu muscles when you, when you do exercise, uh, but you really, the liver is the key here. You want to get rid of all that sugar in the liver, all that fat in the liver. So, uh, but it's very simple. But now what you do is you take a disease which is dietary in nature and you've treated it with intensive dietary management rather than drugs. And that's why it's successful. So we see people, so we have, I have an intensive dietary management program. We've been treating people for like uh, four or five years now. And we see people who reverse, even just today, I saw somebody on 75 units of insulin a day, took them down to zero in like four months. They had it for 15 years, took them down to zero in like four months. And the A1C is 5.9. You know, in our lab, that's, tech, that's classified as non-diabetic. So we took a severe diabetic and turned them into a non-diabetic in four months when they had this disease for 15 years. 
And so that's what we do. We have an online program for that as well in terms of for diabetes reversal. It's uh, the intensive dietary management program, which is idmprogram.com. And people can join and get help uh, with that. But it, it, it's, it's really trying to get people to understand that this is, this is a disease that you have to treat the underlying cause, not just sort of band-aid over the, the situation and then say things are getting worse. That makes a lot of sense. How does insulin and insulin resistance fit into the picture? You talked about the essentially diabetes is too much sugar in the blood and the way to reverse it is to get the sugar out of the body or too much sugar in the body. And, and, and the, the way to reverse it is to get the sugar out of the body through low carbohydrate diet, exercise and fasting. Where does insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia fit into the picture? So hyperinsulinemia, so insulin is a normal hormone. So what it does is when the, you eat carbohydrates and protein, insulin goes up and it tells the body to store food energy. So you store it as glucose, which is glycogen in the liver. When you have too many carbohydrates, then you turn that into fat. So there's a process in the liver called de novo lipogenesis, which turns that excess carbohydrate and protein into fat. So you store, essentially you store the excess uh, carbohydrates and protein as sugar, which is glycogen or fat, body fat. Um, you get to the stage where you have something called insulin resistance. And insulin resistance only refers to the fact that you have, if you have, uh, if you normally eat a meal, so say you eat a meal which has some carbs, some protein, some fat, blood glucose goes up, insulin goes up, the insulin, the insulin then forces that blood glucose down by shoving it into the cells. Um, at some point when you have insulin resistance, they say what, what you see is that when you eat the meal, the blood glucose stays up and the insulin level is not low. It actually tends to be high, but for some reason that insulin is not pushing that glucose into the cell and that's what's called insulin resistance. And the question is why this insulin is no longer working. And the reason, and, and that's called insulin resistance, which is sort of synonymous with type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes is insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is type 2 diabetes. And the way to understand why is that the cell um, is full of glucose. So if it's already full of glucose, that insulin is not able to shove any more glucose into that cell. So what the body does is it produces more insulin to really stuff it in. So it's kind of like a suitcase, for example. So, you know, the first couple of shirts go into the suitcase, no problem. But once it's full, those last two shirts, it takes a lot of force to push it down. But what caused it to fill up in the first place? It was too much fructose, too much glucose, which caused too much insulin. That is what filled up the cell in the first place. So it's an overflow phenomenon. So you can think of the cell or the body as a sugar bowl. So if it's empty, the sugar goes in, no problem. Insulin makes the sugar go in, no problem, there's no insulin resistance. As you fill up that bowl, then what happens is that that insulin is no longer able to shove any in because it's full and it'll spill out into the blood. And that's what's called insulin resistance. But what caused it in the first place was too much insulin and too much sugar in the first place. So the whole thing comes down. So all that insulin resistance was really just caused by too much sugar. So it's the same process, insulin resistance, which causes more insulin uh, secretion, which causes more resistance because remember, insulin is trying to shove all that sugar in. So just like our overfilled suitcase, the wrong thing to do in this case is to use more insulin. Okay, so if you have an overfilled suitcase, the solution is not to get a friend to help push down the cell some more, push down the suitcase. Because as you shove more shirts into that suitcase, and then you say, oh, yeah, but if I get my friend, I can close it up. Eventually, it reaches a point where the two of you are not enough. So then you say, oh, I'll get a third friend, right? And that's what we do because the problem is too much sugar and too much insulin. So the solution cannot be to give more insulin. The better solution is to get rid of all that glucose, which is filling up the cell in the first place. So again, if you think about that suitcase, the solution is not to get more friends to help sit on the suitcase. The solution is to get rid of some of the shirts that you put in. It's the same thing. So in the cell, the solution is to get rid of that glucose. How do you do that? One, don't put it in. And two, burn it off if you have it in. 
So you've described uh, having too much glucose in the cell as one of the drivers for insulin resistance. Uh, many other doctors and scientists also have described uh, having fat around the liver uh, and the pancreas, uh, uh, as well as muscles, as uh, one of the drivers of insulin resistance as well. So we've, we've got these different elements, uh, high insulin levels, insulin resistance, fat stored in the muscles, liver, and pancreas. And then we've got too much glucose in the cell, which uh, as you just described, drives more insulin resistance. How do, how do all these pieces fit together? They're all caused by the same thing. So it's, uh, they're absolutely right. So what you see is that fatty infiltration of the muscles, fatty infiltration of the liver, and fatty infiltration of the pancreas is what causes the type 2 diabetes. But where does that fat come from? Some people say dietary fat, but that's not where it comes from. Because when you eat fat, it doesn't go into the liver. It goes into the bloodstream and where it's taken up by fat cells. The way that you get too much of this fatty infiltration of uh, organs is by giving a lot of carbohydrates, refined carbohydrates, and high doses of insulin. So if you give a lot of insulin, remember, what happens is that it takes that glucose. So if you eat too much sugar, glucose and fructose, and then insulin goes way up high, and you do this sort of day after day after day, the, the liver takes that glucose, turns it into fat. It then has to export that fat out of the liver because it's not supposed to keep it around. But if it's producing so much fat that it can't export it all out, then it backs up and you, what you get is fatty liver. Because if you eat fat, it never gets into the liver. It never gets delivered to the liver. As the liver is pumping it out, the first place it goes to is the skeletal muscles, which start to take up the fat because uh, you know, it's, it's there, and also the pancreas and the visceral organs, so the organs around the fat. But it's all driven by too much insulin. So in the end, all of the fatty infiltration of organs, the uh, insulin resistance, which is linked to that, and the sort of beta cell dysfunction, which is fatty infiltration of the pancreas, is all driven by hyperinsulinemia, which is driven by too much sugar, which is glucose and fructose. Again, if you come down to it, once you get down to the root cause, now you can say, okay, now I have something to treat. So the, the, the problem is actually hyperinsulinemia. Then the, the question is, okay, good. How do I lower insulin? And that's how you treat the problem. If you just say, for example, oh, the problem is caused by fatty liver. Well, what causes a fatty liver? And uh, we don't know. Well, that doesn't help you. You have to get to the root cause, which is, in the end, hyperinsulinemia, too much glucose, too much fructose. Excellent. So you, you uh, described earlier uh, a low-carb diet, and you mentioned fasting. And I'd, I'd love to talk to you for a few minutes about fasting. You wrote a book about fasting. This is something, obviously, you are known for. You teach quite a bit. So if people want to start fasting, what's a good place for them to start? Um, fasting is just not eating, basically. So um, you could do it at any point. So in a day, you, normal fasting should be sort of 12 to 14 hours. That is, you eat dinner at sort of like 7 p.m. and you don't eat breakfast until 7 a.m. That's 12 hours of fasting. That's what a normal day is. If you want to extend that period of fasting, then you can go up to like 16 hours, for example, which is a 16-8 or time-restricted eating, which is where you only eat, eat for eight hours a day. You can go up to 20 hours of the day, for example, and those would be done most days of the week, sort of six out of seven days sort of thing. Um, as you develop diabetes, you may want to give your body a bit more time because remember, the thing about fasting is that if you don't eat, your body is forced to burn off that sugar. And it's like, well, that's great. That's the whole problem in the first place for prediabetes and diabetes, uh, type 2 diabetes, is that you have too much sugar. So now you're going to burn it. Is it fun? No. But it's an all-natural way to do it. We're not giving you drugs. We're trying to take away those drugs in, in the IDMP program. Um, and it's 100% natural, and it's been used for thousands of years. So you can go up to, say, 24 hours of fasting, which is sort of a one meal a day sort of idea, which is maybe, say, 23 hours a day uh, of fasting. Um, and you might do that, say, three times a week. That's sort of another very popular schedule. As you get into the more severe diabetes, you can keep going up. You can go up to 36 hours, which is a full day fast. So example, for example, if you eat 
uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner on Monday, then you don't eat anything after dinner on Monday, and then you don't eat uh, anything for all of Tuesday, and then don't eat again until Wednesday morning, that's longer than 24 hours. It's about a 30 to 36 hour fast. And that simply gives your body more time to burn sugar. And as you burn sugar, you're going to get better if you do it day after day. And then you can go into the multiple, like so the multiple day fast, sort of four days, five days, seven days sort of thing. It's all, um, it's all up to you what you want to do. The longer you go, the more powerful it is. But there is, you know, things you have to watch out for, medication adjustments and all these other things. that You do have to be a bit careful of refeeding, which is, you know, if you do a long fast, you have to do it you have to break it very gradually. So, but, but again, these treatments are, have, have a huge advantage because one, as I said, they're all natural. They've been used for thousands of years, but they're also free. Like for all those people who are sort of disadvantaged or don't have a lot of money, you're going to save money because you're not even buying food. You're relying on your body's stored food sources because that's all body fat is. Remember all that fat that's there in the liver, that's there in the pancreas, that's there on your body. That's just stored food energy. That's there for you to use if you don't have anything to eat. So if you don't have anything to eat, you're going to use it, which is great. Then you're going to get healthy. It's, it doesn't take time to fast. It actually saves you time because you don't have to shop. You don't have to do anything. And it's convenient and it's available sort of tomorrow. You don't have to wait for somebody to set up a clinic for you. You don't have to wait for anything. You don't have to wait till your doctor does this or that. You can start like literally right now for free, available to anybody anywhere in the world. And you <laughs> can do that. it anytime. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. And uh, for people who have questions about fasting, uh, you have an incredible blog over at intensivedietarymanagement.com. Oh, it's actually uh, IDM, IDMprogram.com. Yeah, IDMprogram.com. Okay, yeah. IDMprogram.com. And they can read all about fasting. You've written uh, many, many articles about diabetes and obesity and fasting. You have a book about fasting as well. So, you know, you answer questions like, uh, why you don't lose lean body mass on fasting, why your metabolism doesn't slow down on fasting, you know, why uh, fasting is safe for, you know, almost everyone. And you uh, really cut through a lot of the myths and misinformation, I think, that prevents or stops people from, from practicing fasting. And fasting has stood the test of time. We all fast every day, as you said, anyway. So we're just uh, using that as a strategy and lengthening our fast to improve the health of our, of our body and, and recovery. And there's a lot of benefits to it. Um, so I'd like to finish with just a few questions. And I, I'd like to ask you about your work because first, I just want to honor you. Um, I think you're a pioneer in the field of diabetes. You've uh, really taken uh, you know, some of these concepts and uh, put them out there you know, with a lot of courage and uh, strength of character and uh, you know you've uh, you've really brought this message to a lot of people, and, and I just want to honor you for doing that because I Thank know you. it's not always easy to be out on the front lines. If uh, if there was one message or idea or quote professionally that you'd like to re be remembered by, at least at this point in your career, if you for some reason had to had to hang it all up tomorrow, and, and there was a message that that uh, you wanted people to remember uh, your professional work by, what would that be? I think the most important thing really is to understand that type 2 diabetes is a reversible condition. It's that sort of knowing that is more important than everything else because everybody tries to make you believe elsewise that type 2 diabetes, prediabetes is this sort of predestiny that once you have it, you're always going to have it. And clearly that's not true because we have tons of people who reverse their disease. And other people say, oh, it's just a part of aging. It's not a part of aging. Let's go back to the 1960s. Very few people had type 2 diabetes. And the genetic pool is sort of all the same. So people try and make you, give you this sort of learned helplessness. And you see this on the diabetes, uh, sort of American Diabetes Association. Oh, it's just part of it. It's a life sentence. It's like, no, it's not a life sentence. Like type 2 diabetes is treatable. Once you understand that, then you can start looking for ways to treat it. And whether you want to do sort of calorie restriction or uh, intermittent fasting or low carbohydrate diet, or there's lots of different ways. But once you 
sort of believe that it's a treatable condition, then you can start working towards that. Whereas most doctors have sort of given up the ghost and, and, and tried to have said, oh, you have it, too bad. It's a death sentence. You'll eventually die of this. It's like, it's not a death sentence. It's treatable. I love that it's message. It's a lot of work. It is. It's some work. It's, it's not easy necessarily, even though it's, it's a pretty simple process to do it. It it's, uh, still takes time and takes some commitment. But, uh, but knowing that it's possible, I think, gives people hope. And that's the most important thing. Yeah. And then you can also look for help because, you know, there's programs. So getting the support that you need. So you go out there, like, uh, it's not so bad now, but five years ago, you we, we used to say one of our top tips was don't tell anybody because people are going to shoot you down when they hear you're fasting. Now it's not so bad. It's kind of out there. People accept it and have sort of recognized the sort of logic behind it. But boy, five years ago, we we're like, yeah, don't tell anybody you're doing this because they're going to come down on you like a ton of bricks. So getting the support you need, um, you know, whether it's a group uh, situation. So there's Facebook groups, for example, that you can join. We have a Facebook group, which is like a, uh, it's called like fast. Um, so that that is available. There's lots of other fasting groups, keto groups, low carb groups are out there, and um, you know there are things that you can use. So we have a list of you know tips uh, for people and sort of uh, helps appetite suppressants. We often uh, use uh, things like tea, for example, which is a very uh, like a natural whole food, for example. So different uh, teas, particularly green tea, for example, is often very effective for people uh, to lose weight. Uh, so yeah, there's things you can do to get help because it is difficult. Okay, great. Uh, just two other questions here. The first one is if you had a, a really good friend or a family member who uh, was had a, got a surprise diagnosis of type two diabetes. You didn't know that they were, you know, maybe even on this path. And they they came and told you, and and you had uh, just two minutes to really give them kind of your best advice on what to do about it. What would you tell them? Uh, much as what we discussed. I mean, that di type two diabetes is really just about too much sugar in the body. So burn it off. Just burn it off. It's been done. Many, many times successfully, we see, I see it almost every single day. Uh, and if you want to avoid all the problems, because, you know, I, I tell people it's not fun, but neither is like getting your leg chopped off and neither is having a heart attack and neither is having a stroke and neither is going blind and neither is going on dialysis when your kidneys fail. None of that is fun. Taking medications, two, three, four medications, injection after injection for the rest of your life, is that fun? Not really, it, yeah, not at all. you know, so, so, so you have to make a choice because if you don't take care of those dietary issues, if you just take the medications and, and, and just try to pretend that you're getting better, it doesn't. And you have, you're going to face those consequences later on. Um, and if it, if that does happen, it will be too late at that point because once the damage is done, it's sort of done. You can't undo the damage that's, that's already done. Just like if you have a car and you don't change the oil, then it breaks down. Then you say, oh, I'm going to change the oil now. It's mm -hmm. like, mm, that's good, but not going to help. <laughs> a little too late. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, and finally, this is a big one. And uh, if you're sitting around the table with uh, 20 of the world leaders, you know, presidents from all the major industrialized countries and they're, they're looking at the diabetes epidemic and scratching their head, and they brought you in as an expert to help them solve the diabetes epidemic. Uh, what advice would you give them? It's all about education. And this is the thing that people have to understand from a public health standpoint. The way that we treat type 2 diabetes, especially in America, is not sustainable from a fiscal standpoint. Like, it's going to bankrupt you. Uh, the medications cost an arm and a leg. Uh, when you develop the complications, heart attacks, strokes, and cancer, the treatment is fantastically expensive and more and more people are getting it. So um, setting aside the sort of human cost to it, the sort of money cost to it is huge. But you have to understand that all of this is treatable, preventable for free, merely with education. So you're not trying to build huge clinics to do surgery for people. You're not trying to train, you know, hundreds of doctors to get out there and do this fancy thing. You're just educating the general population, which they do anyway, 
on best practices, on how to use fasting, why you shouldn't fear fasting, why if your blood sugar is up, you can do a bit more fasting because, hey, if you don't eat, your blood sugar will fall. If your blood sugar falls, you don't need to take medication. What's so hard to understand about that? If you continue to not eat, you'll lose weight. As you lose weight, your type 2 diabetes will go away. Well, what's wrong with that? It's available for free and it's going to save the governments of whole nations literally billions of dollars. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that's not including the sort of human cost and suffering, right? The heart attacks and strokes and cancer, uh, which is sort of immeasurable in terms of dollar amounts. But the dollar amounts themselves are just staggering. Wow. Great advice. There you have it, Dr. Jason Fung idmprogram.com. He's got a great program on helping people to reverse type 2 diabetes, get control of their blood sugar, and uh, the diabetes code, the obesity code on Amazon. Uh, and I'm sure you can get information at the website as well. Check out his blog at idmprogram.com as well. Dr. Fung, thanks so much for being part of the Mastering Blood Sugar podcast and spending some time with me here today. All right. Thanks, Brian. All right, everybody. Uh, we'll be back next week with another expert interview.